Hello. There we go. Okay. So my talk is on two libraries I made. First one is generic syntax expanders. And I'm going to open with a very controversial statement. Macros are really great. And the alternate title for this talk is how I spent way too much time stumbling around how the syntax system works and getting extremely confused. So macros are really nice. Pattern matching is also really nice. Uh, in Racket, pattern matching is implemented as a library with macros. Does a whole bunch of nice, cool analysis, uh, figures out when you do branches that interleave and makes sure that you only check things once and does all the binding and expansion you need. Now, most macros have a closed grammar. When you make it, you say, these are the things you're allowed to do. This is how the syntax is. That's it. That's the end all be all. But match has an open grammar. You can add new terms to match and new ways to define certain patterns in match. So for instance, if I have a function that says, this is true for lowercase letters, I can make a match expander that will only match lowercase letters from that. Now, it just uses a little bit of sugar, uh, it's just a little sugar around the built-in conditional matching. Now, once I've made this match expander, you can match a list and use this lowercase letter pattern in your match patterns, which is really nice. Um, complex macros like match often have DSLs embedded in them, domain-specific languages. And often, it is wanted that you provide a way for users of your library to extend this macro with their own arbitrary sub-macros. Match and syntax parse both do this. Match with match expanders, syntax parse with pattern expanders. Yeah, there's also that in uh, require and provide. So generic syntax expanders let you create an expander type. And with that expander type, you can specify how macros use expanders that you've created with that. So you can add extensible macros, like match expanders or uh, pattern expanders, onto existing uh, macros that don't have extensibility without having to change the underlying implementation. So if I have some static closed macro foo base, all it does is you have to give it strings, and it just prints them all out on a line, on, on each on its own line. Nothing too special. Um, I can make an expander type called foo, and I can now make a new version of the foo macro, where all it does is it first gathers up everything you've given it, uh, expands all of the foo expanders, and that expand foo expanders gets defined when you make a new expander type. And then the expanded forms get passed down to the base foo ma uh, macro. Now, it's you, you can use it exactly the same way as the base one, but you can also make your own foo expander. So in this case, this is a little macro that will take some identifier you give it and just turn it into a string. And this is so unhygienic, it might make pure schemas want to throw up, but the cool part here is we can now add our own little special foo macros into the grammar of foo without having to change it or without having to change the implementation of the foo base macro. So for something a little less trivial, how many, how many people have used the racket command line parsing library? How many people found it to be kind of brittle and you kind of have to do some weird stuff to get things dynamic and yeah, okay. <laughs> so. Command line flag grammars often have a lot of really common patterns that you repeat over and over, and it's really hard to abstract over those patterns. Now, some of these are flags that just toggle a parameter and set it to a certain value, or flags that just, when you have, have them, they toggle a parameter to true or false or something. Now, it would be really nice if we had easy ways to pull out those patterns into their own little macros in command line, and we can have some nice special syntax for those specific cases. Well, command line ext is the second library I wrote, and it uses uh, generic syntax expanders to add a layer over the base command line grammar, where it allows you to add your own expanded types 
So you can just sort of make your own little command line flag expanders. And for an example, suppose we have three just Boolean parameters that you want to toggle with flags. So standard way to do that, just make a parameter for each one. They all default to false. And with command line ext, there is a toggle params command line expander where I give it a bunch of uh, uh, pairs of parameter, the flags, and a description, and it will turn that at compile time and transform it into the form that the racket command line uh, expects to give you the ability to pass in these parameters, and it will automatically toggle those parameters when you pass in those flags. So you can call it like this, and it does all of the same things that the base racket command line library does, where the single switches group, and you get the end dash dash switch to let you do all the crazy stuff. And all of this will let you toggle those base parameters, and you don't have to write any of that mushy imperative code that sets parameters when you're parsing your command line stuff. So another example, suppose we have a compiler and one of the parameters that you can tweak when you're running it is the optimization level. Let's say it defaults to one and that does no optimizations at all. Now there is a natural num param a command line flag expander and what you do is you give it a parameter, a flag, and then a list of descriptions and for each one it will add uh, the number two, three, or four, or what have you, to the end of the flags and make shorthands for setting that parameter to that integer. So with this, it expands to a form of racket command line that understands these. So you can pass in, you know, you can make ways to pass in the various command line flags for specific optimization levels fairly easily. And again, you don't have to touch the parameter yourself and this one is built on top of some underlying parameter, more general machinery that both toggle param and the natural number param use together. So if we want to make our own command line flag expander, for instance, suppose we want one, like suppose we're running a whole ton of compilers for God knows what reason, and we keep on wanting to pass in optimization levels. So let's make a flag expander specifically for dealing with optimization levels. It's just a little sugar around the natural number param, the flag expander, that just assumes you're using a current optimization level parameter and it has a standardized flag name. So now, that old program here for trying to set the various optimization levels and specify what they are, gets turned into just this. Just write optimization levels and then list out what their names are. And it'll take care of toggling the parameter, doing all the setting, doing all the expansion, making it into something that the base racket command line grammar understands. All of that happens for you at compile time. So generic syntax expanders will let you separate a domain-specific language's extension from a domain-specific language's creation. You can do these now in two different phases. You make a base macro that has your base syntax and implements the basic forms. And then you can define a macro on top of it that will process expansions and figure out how to turn your, expan your expanders into the base macro form. This means that you can implement uh, things like match expanders on top of a match that has no expansion. That doesn't need to be something built in to the match grammar. Same thing applies for syntax par uh, parser, and you can add these things in like a handful of lines. It's very easy. So this sounds all well and good. There are some problems. First off, I mentioned stumbling around the syntax system. I was serious. It is an extremely complicated and very brittle implementation that is extraordinarily gross. It works, but it's gross. <sighs> And it doesn't respect syntax protect. And if you don't know what that is, uh, thank your lucky stars, because it means you've never had to deal with die packs and that monstrous section in the reference manual about how syntax arming and taints and rearming and all that crazy stuff works, let alone wonder why it was needed in the first place. Now, what happens is the way generic uh, command, syntax expanders work 
is they'll store the macro at compile time in something really, in like a gross opaque box. And when it walks the syntax tree, it will actually pluck out the thing in the box when you call the expand all expanders function. And it does all of this in an extremely gross way that picks apart your syntax, which means that it examines everything and syntax protect will blow up whenever you try and examine a piece of syntax that's constructed. Syntax rules automatically wraps the syntax transformation returns in syntax protect. So you cannot use a syntax rules macro with generic syntax expanders. There are much better ways around this. For instance, the way match expanders are actually implemented, they do things with a structure type property. And I ran into some issues with that as I was stumbling around the syntax system and ended up going with this more uh, trade-off approach. Now, it also doesn't support you using an expander outside of the context you mean to. You cannot, uh, you can only expand your expanders through those calls to the expand all functions. You cannot do what match expanders do, which is you can make a match expander that means something in the context of match, but if you use it normally it means something else. For instance, when you match list A, B, C, in match, that means a pair of cons pattern matches. But if you write that in regular bracket code, it means the actual list function. You can't get that sort of by, uh, that sort of two-sided functionality with generic syntax expanders. For a lot of cases, that's not too much of a problem. For instance, with the command line flags, you're not really ever going to use those outside of command line EXD anyway. Now, all of this is making me realize that it's cool. The biggest thing it's taught me is that macros are really complicated. <laughs> And I'm sure anybody who has read the docs on that giant pile of a syntax system can tell you the same. Um, but it's extraordinarily uh, what we can actually do with it. And the idea of making a base language and then adding in the ways to define extensions to it in a really general way is a very interesting thing that I'd like to spend some more work on. And you can do some really, really cool stuff with it and make some very nice special DSLs. Uh, that's all I've got. My email is jackhworth at gmail.com. I am not Jack in the IRC, but I speak through the Slack wormhole for anyone who's seen that. And I'm Jack Firth on GitHub. <laughs>
but you can't know what expression positions are without doing expansion. It's, hmm? it's is it related yeah. to that? If the right hand side of a match is another match with a different mac a different match expander, mm -hmm. Ryan's point is that you don't want to expand the second one because that's in the second match, not the first one. But I believe that your implementation will expand it as it's expanding the first one, which may be incorrect because of scope, for instance. And there, would it be, would that second match be in the right hand side of a binding or would it be in the left hand side where the match, it would be in the right hand side, but it would be within the match parameters. Okay. So the general uh, approach there is it's left up to whoever is making the macro that calls the expansion to only call it with the pieces of syntax where it's appropriate. For instance, when you do it with match, you wouldn't expand everything in match's body. You would only expand the binding clauses. So I'm not sure if that would, uh, get rid of recursion in all cases, but it does for that one. <laughs> all right, um, I think that's time here, um, but all of our speakers will be available afterwards. <laughs>